not even gonna move this. Okay, <laughs> hi everybody. Um, wow. I'm Troy Track Select. This is the Select Few Sessions, and if you're listening, you are one of the Select Few. And today we've got Sadie Johnson. Everybody, give it up. All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and let her get started. You ready? Don't you know that I'm, ooh, I'm 
Thank y'all. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that tune um, will actually is the title track off of my new EP. That one's called Natural Distractions. New EP will be out uh, possibly by, like, first and or second week of December, which is super exciting. We got the CDs coming in. We got everything. So, so stay tuned for announcement with streaming and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, that tune is actually kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, I wrote that one in the studio while I was recording my EP with my band. Um, went home that night and wrote the lyrics because I had no idea what the lyrics were going to be. But uh, we came up with this jam and then I'm like, man, what's something that, uh, that <laughs> musicians and people struggle with? And, it's, and so I, I talked about a little bit of my struggle with um, uh, depression and all that funky stuff. And so, yeah, that's uh, Natural Distractions. Let's see. Now, this is one of my favorite tunes to do right now. This is a tune by The Weight, so bringing it back a little bit. Um, no, tune by the band called The Weight. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. It's all good. Hope y'all dig this one, The Weight. <laughs>
said, hey, hey, hey. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right. Let's see, I got to tune up real fast because it's getting it a little too much during that last song. <coughs> all right, I'm going to slow it down a little bit and do an original. Um, this one is called Without You and... It's crazy. Um, as an artist, you can remember specific things when you're writing songs. So you can absolutely put yourself back in the exact spot I was sitting on my bed, wearing the exact pants, like with the exact lighting, and thinking about that night in in January back in 2019, like when it's snowing outside, and you're just you just want that person. Like, it takes me back every time. Every time I perform this song or play it. So that's the power of music, man. Oof. Um, but this one is called Without You, and uh, yeah, it's this is also on the record. Um, I had the incredible Mina Cohane, who is an incredible vocalist and pianist in town, um, had her record this with me, so you definitely should check that out when it comes out, which will be soon. <laughs> All right. But I always forget the lyrics, so that sucks. <laughs> All right. And I wrote it. I swear, lyrics are the... No, it's fine. Lyrics are great. It's fine. I'm ready. Winter night alone with my thoughts I miss you I didn't know your soul from Adam but I kissed you emptiness surrounds me again and I'm falling to love with you my dear friend something's calling together 
So I'll sit waiting patiently, no matter the weather. So how will I know when to let go? So darling, love me till morning, just come and hold me until the light shines through that window pane. Your spirit, it captivates me, it's got me lost in this daydream. Now I'm just lying here wide awake without you. Without you again, no, without you. Thank you guys. Welcome back. Now we gotta, oh, no, we're good. Oh, gotta clear that up. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Well, I think I just got a couple more minutes. So let's see. Um, you guys want another original? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, okay. This one's called Can You Feel It? Um, this one's probably, this is also off of Natural Distractions. This is probably the bluesiest tune on the record. So for my diehard blues fans, this one's for you. <laughs> Even though it's not diehard blues, but it, you, you got a blues swing, so you're good. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to start that one again. Ha, ha, ha. All right. 
Freckles in the sky Could it be you? Questions asked Lessons we've learned In the past of another world Well this just seems Too good to be true Don't mind, don't wanna lose our love this time. I said, What about love? What could this be here to stay? Could you be the one no one? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? I said, What about us? Let's dive on. Is off my teenage dream. Well, maybe <laughs> my heart's pounding, my mind's racing. I found it, well, darling, I can taste it now. I said, What about love? Well, could this be here to stay? Could you be the one I want? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? So what about us? Let's dive on into the deep end, darling. I don't want to rush. I can feel it. I can feel it. So what about Thank you guys, yeah. All right. We feeling good? We feeling one more? What are we feeling? Good or one more? One more? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. Can we do one more? All right, cool. Um, so this is kind of a crazy one. Um, and you guys are gonna maybe laugh a little bit, but that's okay. It's such a great tune and I've kind of like rearranged it a little bit. Um, so it's kind of a Beyonce song, but it's all good. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool, I promise. Ha, <laughs> ah, shoot. Oh, all right, let's see. Yeah, I could, yeah, okay, cool. We'll just do this one. We'll just, yeah, we'll do this one. This will be good. Um, let me tune before I do this, because you guys know. <laughs>
nana oh 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 nana I look and stare so deep in your eyes I touch on you more more every time when you leave I'm begging you not to go call your name two three times in a row such a bitter feeling trying to go explain oh and my pride is the one to blame Cause you know I don't understand Just how your love can do what no one else can Got me looking so crazy right now Your love's got me looking so crazy right now Got me looking so crazy right now Your touch got me open to say me right now Got you hoping me'll page you right now Your kiss got you open me'll page you right now Looking so crazy Your love's got me looking, got me looking so crazy in love when I talk to my friend so highly, who he think he is, look at what he did to me. Tennis shoes don't need to buy a new dress. If you ain't there, ain't nobody to impress. That's the way that I feel, baby. It's a bit that my heart skips when I'm with you oh, But I still don't understand Just how your love can do what no one else can Got me looking so crazy right now It's got me looking so crazy right now Got me looking so crazy right now Oh my God, me hoping that you'll see me right now Got me hoping you'll face me right now Your kids got me hoping you'll see me right now Looking so crazy in love Got me looking, got me looking so crazy, looking so crazy, yeah, oh, crazy in love, baby. funky there. All right, yeah.
Well, everybody, thank you for coming. Let's give it up for Sadie one more time. Okay. Give me about five or ten minutes so I can reset up, and then we'll have the interview. See ya. Yes, just a quick gig, quick little gig tonight, but then you guys get to hear me talk. Woohoo, right? Okay, who wears matching socks? No. <laughs> because here I've got one Valentine's Day sock on. And then I have one sock. Well, actually this is Santa Claus, but it has hearts on it. So it's Santa celebrating Valentine's Day. Well, if it's Valentine's Day one shows you still believe, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm single all the way, damn it. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so fun. I'm so excited. All right. Oh. Very cool. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for coming. My name is Troy Track Select. This is the Select Few Sessions, and our artist for this month is Sadie Johnson. Let's clap one more time for her. such a great performance. Cool. Okay. So, one well, my problems is I always have to remember how I actually start <laughs> these interviews, but that's, that's okay. Um, we're also using one mic because I couldn't do the calculus to figure out which mic line was supposed to go where back there. So we're working on it. Um, okay, cool. So I guess let's start at the beginning. <laughs> um, we'll, yeah, we'll start with a super easy, uh, obvious question. I guess what made you really start playing? Uh, music in general, and then actually continue to make it something that you're taking much more seriously. All right. Well, um, I got involved. I mean, music just was in the house growing up. Um, my dad, my dad, <laughs> my granddad was a concert pianist and organist um, on Broadway and for presidents and popes and all around the world several times he he toured and traveled with a bunch of different groups so I grew up always listening to show tunes and um, I mean uh, you said let's start at the beginning and I thought of the let's start at the very beginning a very good place to start when you sing you begin with ABC you know we go back to like the sound of music um, but that's where that's where it started me and my sisters would dress up and my mom would videotape us because my dad was overseas you know in the Navy and stuff so that's where um, my love of music I think started kind of growing um, and then my older sister got a guitar for Christmas one year and I was the annoying little sister who always would play the guitar. So that's what got me, I was like six, seven years old, and that's when I was like, man, this is cool. Um, tried to learn, like, play what was on my piano book, on my guitar, and, um, and then I started taking lessons. We actually moved to Indiana from Virginia Beach, and I started taking lessons. And then uh, my teacher, one lesson in, he looks at me and he goes, all right, I'm not teaching you anything other than jazz. And I go, what? I wanna just play like Taylor Swift, you know? Picture to Burn just came out. So I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, and so started listening to Duke Ellington and Fats Waller and, and really like getting into jazz stuff. And so um, when I was in eighth grade, so I was 13, my teacher called me up one Thursday night I had five guitar lessons a week, like we were just going for it. I was just, that's what I wanted to do, and I've got the greatest parents in the world, and they said, yes, let's do it. Um, so he calls me up and he goes, well, instead of our weekly Thursday lesson, I've got a gig, so you wanna come play the gig with me? And I was like, uh, my mom said, yes, she will. <laughs> and I go, what? did I just sign up for? And I cried all the way up until I sat down in the, in the chair. I was so nervous. But that it was just a turning point. Um, and my older sister played guitar at the time with me. Um, so it was Sam on guitar, me on guitar, and Joe on guitar. And it was just awesome. We just played funky jazz tunes and standards. And 
um, after we joined several Thursday night gigs. Then I, we started going to the Tuesday night jams, and then it started going from there. So I would say like 14, 15 years old, I was like, man, this is really, this is my gig. Like 10 years old, I knew I was going to play guitar for the rest of my life. That was just it. But then I was like, man, maybe this could be my, this could be my thing. And so I've kept going ever since. So I know that you started taking very seriously in high school and you were playing in school band and all that kind of stuff. And eventually you kind of started some bands with your sister, the Sad Sam band, right? Um, but then you also had, uh, uh, I want to say, it's not called Girl Band. You guys just had a song Girl that said, with Girls with Guitars, oh, yeah. the name of the album and the group. <laughs> But Girl Band is like the lead sing or the first song on there. So, yeah, so how did you, I guess, get into those ventures? And then eventually, how did you get to just being solo Sadie Johnson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, my junior year of high school, I that's when everyone hounds you about, where are you going to college? Where are you going to college? Where are you going to college? I'm like, you know what? I don't want to go to college. I want to be a rock star. Come on, get off my back. But then dad's like, uh, she's going to college, so you better find one. Um, and at the exact same time that I started to think about possibly going to college, um, I got a, an email from Thomas Roof of Roof Records based in Germany. Um, and it's a blues rock label. Uh, Luther Allison, who's a big blues guitar player um Thomas Roof actually started the the label for Luther Allison which is pretty cool um and I got to tour with his guitar while I was touring over there it was so cool um and so he said hey have you thought about going on the road um Samantha Fish who is now a huge 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 rock star gave Tom my name because she, she's a little bit of a mentor friend um and said hey you got to get Sadie on this tour and it's called the Blues Caravan, and um, they would put three random artists from across uh, all over the world together in a band, record an album, and then put them out on the road. I'm like, well, okay. And so the, the year that they wanted me on, which was 2015, um, they said, we're going to do another Girls With Guitar edition. So Samantha Fish was on five years ago in 2010, 2011. And now we want to kind of revamp it and do three other women, three other blues musicians. So that's kind of how I got that gig. And um, it was a year long commitment, but I kind of, I did four months, four or five months going overseas and I played all over Europe, which was incredible as an 18 year old kid with no parents. It was wild. <laughs> I mean, we had a, we had a great time. It was, uh, it showed me that I totally can do the road, but I want to be with the right people, and I want to be with, like, my band. Um, and so after that, I did the college thing for six years, and I kind of, yeah, you know, the college thing. Um, and I kind of went a little MIA on the music scene just because I realized before I put anything out and before I go out on the road, I've got to find the band. I've, I, I am... Going back to my sister, my band with my sister, I am band oriented, even though I'm such a solo individual, but like give me a band to hang out with and to write with and to groove with. Um, so then I graduated from college with a degree in music therapy, which was amazing, and came back, to, came to Indianapolis and interned at Riley Hospital for Children with a music therapy program, and it was incredible. But then after six, seven months of that, I was like, I just want to go. I just want to give music my all. Like I'm in Indianapolis, this city that is so incredibly blessed with so many incredible jazz musicians, blues musicians, gospel musicians, rock and rollers. Like um, it's just a great scene up here. And I had a little taste of it when I was younger. So I came back in and people were like, hey, Sadie's back. All right, let's go. Um, and so I've been here for a couple of years now. And I'm realizing um, I just recorded my first solo EP. So I found the band. I found the sound. And now I'm finally confident to go the next level and tour and uh, 
put my stuff out, you know, so it'll never, for forever. The internet's forever. That's scary. What was your question? <laughs> was that it? Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm a rambler. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, that's, that's how this show works. <laughs> it doesn't work without it. Uh, okay, cool. So I guess we'll go ahead and start talking about some of your um, new solo releases or newer solo releases. So I was digging around, you know, trying to find some stuff. And I saw that you did an interview with on the Trout Show and um, with Rick Trowman. And he said he doesn't know what people are looking for now in terms of like blues, rock, jazz, whatever. And we're kind of the most isolated we have ever been as a music society because you can stream whatever you want. And most people don't listen to the radio anymore, which, you know, the radio was very, um, they would decide what you were listening to, at least you know, pretty much for most of the time. So now we're not there. You can listen to whatever you want to. Uh, so does that, do ch listening trends kind of decide what sort of music you're going to write in terms of trying to get more listeners? Or are you just writing whatever and whoever finds it, finds it? like that oh a little trouble with the handoff that's fine it's okay um that's very interesting um and I guess I'm gonna start with I don't consider myself much of a songwriter and I'm getting there um but I have always been very kind of like nah I'm gonna do what I want <laughs> with my sound with my guitar playing um and it started back in jazz band in high school when I was an eighth grader. And the guys are looking at me like, what the heck? She's got red boots on, frizzy hair. It wasn't even curly at that point because your girl didn't know how to do curly hair. So it was just a frizz ball. And this big orange Gretsch guitar. And they would be like, no, you can just sit over there. And I had the pleasure of working with Janice Stockhouse, who's an incredible educator, um, jazz educator um, nationwide. And she said, no. Your hair is going to be bigger next time. The boots are going to be shinier. And you're going to get up and you're going to stand up during your solo. And so I've always done things, I think, a little bit differently and never on the norm. So then when it comes to um, my choice of like listening to music, I would say recently, as of late, when I've been doing more of my writing, um, it influences a lot, but then whenever I listen back to it, it's still a little outside of the box. And that goes to kind of labeling myself like genre-wise as an artist. I started in blues. I started with a good 12-bar blues. Absolutely. Some Freddie King. Let's sit down with two acoustics and let's go, jum, 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 you know? Um, and hey, there's a time and place for that everywhere. Absolutely. But I started realizing, man, I'm a little funky, but then I've got jazz and jazz influence, but then blues is what I know, but then I'm a 26-year-old female, so I write sad girl music. So then you've got some of that. Um, so it's kind of hard to figure out where I fit genre-wise. Um, and I would say that's because of the different influences and it's not all by modern trends. Because I've been getting into more 70s like Curtis Mayfield and, and Sly and the Family Stone and that's, it's, it's more so, I'll just like type in something and then you can find so many other things. So I don't know if my writing fits trends, but maybe more so like where I am musically, I think a little bit. Always love songs, though, you know, because why not? <laughs> Shout out to Curtis Mayfield. He's one of my favorites. Shout out to the Pusher Man. Uh, um, okay. So, all right, then. So, you you know, and, and that's, I'm glad that you kind of have this uh, very wide base of what music you're very into and the music that you actually study and then kind of um, what you like to play. So, how has that translated on this newest project, which is two weeks away, pretty much? How, what, what kind of sound should we expect on uh, natural distractions? Yes. Oh, all right. So it is an EP. Um, 
but it's it's like kind of in in between an EP and an album. So I have seven songs on it, um, six originals and one cover. And the cover is actually a Grace Potter tune who, she is an incredible rock vocalist. I mean, powerhouse, powerhouse, um, and a big influence. And so we took that and totally rearranged it. So there's a lot of funky vibes. There's a lot of like a hard backbeat, but very jazz influenced because I've got all jazz musicians on the record. Um, and so we'll go from full band, I've got, we wrote horn charts. I've got full horns, Rob Dixon on saxophone, Jared Thompson on sax, Lexi, Lexi Signor on trumpet. Like we've, uh, Andrew Danforth on, on trombone, like a bunch of indie players. Um, and so there are tunes that are completely orchestrated with huge arrangements and two guitars and the full horn section and two like organ and Wurlitzer and just like everything, you know? Um, but it's a very, I would say it, you still have the, f the live feel of me, because I'm a live musician, I'm not a studio musician. I think you all can probably, most of you have seen me before, and so nev nothing is the same twice. Um, and so we kind of, we were able to capture that in the studio. There's a lot of like little differences here and there that we wanted to keep in, um, at little intricacies. But, and then we go, so we go from full orchestrated rock band with fuzz pedal distortion solos to the last tune of the record is just me and an acoustic and one microphone. So it really kind of takes you a little bit on a journey and you'll be able to hear a lot of my musical influences in that as well. Everything from like ripping Rob Dixon jazz solos that are totally out with some day tripper harmonies going on in the background, like giving you some some Beatles vibes with then you've got a little bit of Hendrix in the ridiculous solo. Like we've it, it kind of branches a lot. But then it's also modern. So it's me coming in as a 26 year old female going, OK, but you're going to hear my voice, which is a little softer in some tunes, a little harder over here. So um, it was, it's, it's really all over the place. But I think it'll be really enjoyable for the listener as, oh, we have no idea what's coming next. But it all sounds like Sadie somehow. And I don't know how, but we got it. So that's cool. <laughs> Very cool. OK, so. I guess we'll, well, I'll ask some questions about uh, some of your most recent songs and some of the ones that we should expect on this EP. Um, you've got a song on there, well, the title track, Natural Distraction, which I think has been also labeled as like um, losing my mind in other places that I've seen too, but officially, officially. Natural Distraction is the title track. Okay, cool. So uh, you talked about being my one step ahead is two steps behind. Uh, and earlier, I'm not sure if the cameras caught that or not, but you talked about that song being about um, dealing with depression. So what exactly was going on in Natural Distractions there? And why call it that? Yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, yeah, so this is, this is probably one of the tunes that I'm most proud of, like writing-wise, because it's very, like, you kind of have to dig and you have to talk about it you know, discuss it a little bit, which that's what music is supposed to do, is, is supposed to bring us together and like connect us. So um, as musicians, everyone deals with a certain amount of head stuff. And I think as, as humans nowadays, um, everyone deals with head stuff. And so going back to my music therapy education a little bit and focusing on how does music really help um, get us through the emotions and the act of songwriting. So so going back to the day I wrote this tune, we got in the studio and I have this riff, and I had nothing else. I'm like, guys, what do we do with this? So Kevin Anker, who's an incredible friend and incredible organ player, um, starts sitting down, he's like, shh, shh, shh. 
I think I got it. And then we're all sitting there, and it's, it's Matt McConaughey on bass, and Brian Yard on drums, and myself on guitar, and, and, and Kevin on the organ. And we start creating this tune, and I'm like, wow, there's such a dichotomy between the chorus ish which is this major that isn't it great isn't it grand and then it goes back to this minor and that is absolutely like these ups and downs of i would say the struggle and the battle with depression and um i actually uh, by uh, diagnosed with bipolar disorder as well so like that's cool right on but it's those struggles with that how do I kind of stay a little flatlined? Or how do I how do I keep it not stay flatlined? That sounds boring. A little tighter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We need a little compression pedal on it. You know, <laughs> something like that. Um, so it, beautiful distractions. Or no, beautiful disaster knocking down my door. Troubles racing through my mind. But I've been down this road before. So that's that first verse. Um, and honestly, it's, it's for me, it's like this tornado that's just coming at you and then barely misses. So isn't life great, though? Like, hey, hey, you, you got two legs. Isn't life grand? Come on. This is, now, this is someone else talking to you a little bit. Isn't it great? Isn't it? You're fine. You're fine, right? Are, are we too late to understand that my one step ahead is still your two steps behind. So we're still, I'm never catching up to you. Like there's always something holding me back just a little bit. And my favorite line is, while you're clean breathing, I'm dragging my feet and I'm losing my mind. So um, it's just, it's this silent struggle that so many people deal with, but I feel like musicians really, really get. And then natural distractions keeping me in a haze. So what is that? Our vices. How do we, how do we mindless interactions um, leading me through my days? So it's, it's you're, you're going through this in this like fog and this haze and you can't get out. And so it's something that I feel like everyone and I'm going to say it like men could probably like be able to go, oh, um, yeah, maybe, you know, and be able to talk about it a little bit more. Women, we do talk about it, I feel like, and, and we're allowed to talk about it now. So it's getting it's getting our, our, our dudes on board with this. And it's OK to like just have this kind of looming thing. So how do we get out of it? Like we play music. We come together, and, and then there's like this jam at the end. And I feel like that's that, again, that weird like coming together but separate apart. And yeah, but it's a, it's a song that I'm definitely proud of, I would say. Great song. Very cool. So, how much time? Okay. So, um, I'll ask this. You mentioned your uh, college education in music therapy. And so I was curious. You've already said that, you know, it is something that can sometimes decide how you write a song and how you want people to experience it. So just, you know, real quickly, uh, I'd love for you to explain what music therapy actually is, because I hear people talk about like music is my therapy, but that's the difference between <laughs> there's a difference between that and what actual music therapy is. So please tell us what music therapy is and kind of uh, your relationship with it. Oh man, all right, well, I'll try and make this fast. Um, um, yeah, music therapy, there's a lot of different working definitions, but it basically is the use of music to increase, invoke, improve health and whatever that, that is. So um, I worked specifically at Riley, which is a children's hospital. So that's working with the psycho um psychosocial self right like the the physical therapist works on the, the ailments with our body the the talk therapist works with like just this right here the, the brain the doctors give the shots and do the procedures so these kids have like no way of regulating like why can't i play why can't i go outside 
what's really happening to me? And how do we do that in a childlike way? Well, music is very accessible. Um, and so we bring in instruments and we're able to work through some of the trauma that they're going through because it's a very traumatic time via improvisation if they're old enough to learn some scales and we jam on a blues or via songwriting. Songwriting is huge. Like, what are these emotions that we're feeling? Maybe we can't figure them out yet, but we're going to write a song. So how do we get from here not being able to talk about what's going on inside, not being able to talk about like my physical feelings because maybe there's been other trauma or PTSD or you know things from other situations. So it's using music as the vehicle to improve. Um, and, and that's very, very, very simplified. Um, but it's also about the therapeutic relationship between the music therapist and the client. And so that's where a lot of people say music is therapy. Absolutely music is therapy, but by sitting and putting earbuds in, it's not doing music therapy because it's really about that relationship as well. Um, and that's really cool, like being human with someone. Uh, I have a very uh, humanistic approach, so it's how, where are you right now level-wise, energy-wise? I know I'm always very big and very loud, but like ISO principle, like meeting the person where they are. Like, all right, if they are feeling a little down, feeling a little rough today, we bring in right here. And now musically, what song matches that? What groove matches what you are experiencing? Maybe you're drawing over there and you've got red and you are scribbling and you're just going at it. Okay, let me play a little bit more something so we can sit in those emotions for a minute and then you can talk about it or then process it in whatever way. Um, so there are many different uh, interventions you can do while being a music therapist, but it's really just helping that person get to a better place um, through the use of music. And so yeah, I, I love to approach performing that way. And I always have, even before I knew what music therapy was. Um, when I was 14, I'd play blues jams down in Bloomington and I would see like the same guy sitting in the back corner and just looked like he just had a bad day, you know? And I go, I'm not playing, I, I, I'm not playing for myself, I'm not playing for my sisters, I'm playing for that guy over there because guess what? But somehow when I get on stage and start flipping my hair and jumping up and down, he starts smiling. And maybe it's because he lost a child. Maybe it's because he lost a job. Maybe it's because there's no food at home. And the cool thing about music is somehow it can still connect us on a humanistic level. And that's, I love performing for that reason. And I think that's how music therapy comes into my everyday approach with music. It's, it's not about me although I'm so like crazy perfectionist, so it's weird. <laughs> um, it's not about me, it's about like, how are we going to get to other people? Because like, that's what we gotta do on this planet. We gotta get help out other people. So, yeah. All right. Uh, so I always, at least, yeah, I always give uh, the crowd a chance to ask a question if they would like to, but I'm definitely not gonna press you on it. I might actually. Um, but. Are there any questions that you all have for Sadie with whatever? Yeah, go for it, Patrick. That is so cool, man. Okay, yes, we did. And um, I wanna say, this is one of the reasons why this album has taken longer than planned, um, is because I never knew what my sound was. I didn't know what the band sounded like. Yeah, I can watch videos, whatever. 
And I don't know what flipped. And so I started having other people mix the record. A couple, this person, that person, who never played with me, who didn't know me. And I kept on getting these mixes back and they weren't bad, but they weren't me. And so I finally, I sat back down at Postal and I was talking to Tyler, who's one of the lead engineers there. Incredible, incredible guys over there. Um, and I go, man, we're sitting in this room right here. We all recorded in one room, except for Kevin. Kevin was in a sound booth with the organ, whatever. Um, so this is where it happened. I want to be able to hear where it happened when you put on some headphones. So I want to be able to hear the bass kind of like right over here. I want to be able to hear the drums kind of kind of right here. And you hear this guitar right here and this guitar right here. And it started to feel like you were sitting in the room with the musicians. So it just had this live sense. And I would say that's also a very like 60s, 70s way of mixing. You m you've, you've just got all your musicians in a room and you're able to hear where the keys are, where the bass is, where the drums are, where the vocals kind of take over. Um, so yes, I would say a lot of panning and then too much panning. And then I'm like, oh, I can't hear it over here though. <laughs> Um, so yes, and that's also interesting. I'm gonna look into that type of therapy because uh, vibration, like we can become entrained and that's a m music kind of term, but uh, musicians playing and or just audience members during a uh, performance can all become entrained on like the same level and it's basically a higher level of like intentionality where you know, where you're so into the music, you're like, yeah, 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 all right, all right. You know, everyone's, everyone is hitting the beat. Why is everyone hitting the beat? Because we're all vibrating at the same frequencies. Like, we're, we're really, we're all hearing the same music. So we're starting to vibrate. So it's interesting. Maybe there's some sort of the vibrational aspect of that has some sort of meaning. I don't know. That's... That's very cool, and I'm gonna look into that. So yeah, okay, cool. Anyone else? That was a really cool question. <laughs> and that's okay if not. Thanks for being here. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks so much for coming. Uh, let's clap for Sadie one more time. Sadie Johnson, everybody. And Indy String Theory. Yeah, Indy String Theory. Shout out to Indy String. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um, well, thank you all for coming so much. I'm glad to have met all of you and gotten to talk to all of you. And I guess we'll see you next time. Peace.